Hey there. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I made this. Well, it's kind of a small item, but I learned a lot when I was building this from design, metal finishing. I learned about some machining operations on the lathe that I had never tried before. I learned a lot more about creating technical drawings and also how to clearly communicate the dimensions on those drawings. So you may be wondering what this is. Well, it's a mini Sharpie with a custom aluminum casing. Well, I'd like to show you some of the stuff that I learned during this project, so here we go. First of all, let me back up two and a half years ago to the spring of 2016 when I watched Greg Porter work with Jimmy DeResta to develop his own twisted Sharpie. That's where the original inspiration for this project started. Then about a year and a half ago, my son Tyler turned an aluminum Sharpie cover, which further inspired me to get going on my own. Whenever I talk about the creative process, the subject of limitations always comes up. I like to refer to them as design parameters. In this project, I don't have a client or a customer to give me those rules or parameters, so I had to come up with my own. I gave myself a short list of machining operations that I wanted to practice on. The biggest challenge was going to be matching the critical dimensions of this mini Sharpie. What you're looking at here is my second iteration of drawings. This is where I had pretty much determined what the outside of the pen was going to look like and I also had determined that I wanted to put screws in each end to hold the cap and the barrel in place. All that chicken scratch off to the right are the dimensions that I found by using digital calipers and going up and down the cap and the barrel to determine where the metal would contact the plastic inside. Just to double check things, I photographed the marker so that I could have some visual reference that could then be imported into the CAD environment. After merging the photography with the dimensional drawing that was created from the 3D CAD file, it gave me some pretty good confirmation that things were going to fit the way I expected them to. Oh, I know what you might be thinking. Yeah, there's that pocket clip. Well, you'll see what I do with that later on in the video. Well, that's enough talking for now. Let's oil up the machine and start cutting metal. Well, if you're interested in seeing how I set up the lathe to cut these tapers, that's coming up shortly. But for right now, I want to show you my radial cutter in action. It's also known as the ball turner. Now, to bore out the inside, I have to flip this part around and drill it from the other end. 
In order to hold this securely without marring this brand new shiny surface I just made, I'm going to make a nylon insert that fits inside the chuck. I'd like to thank Tony Rollo for this idea. I saw him do something similar with a brass piece he was working on. I wanted to sneak up on this inside diameter, so that's why I used a boring bar to finish it. I wanted this nylon bushing to work with both pieces, so I made a spacer to go with the short cap section. I ended up with a really nice snug fit, and then when I tightened the jaws on the chuck, it really held it well. After removing a little of the excess metal and facing the end, I moved on to drilling with the 3 8 drill that goes all the way the full depth of the cap. I followed that up with a 33 64 drill. I marked the bit and went into the depth specified on the drawing. Now let's see if all that measuring paid off. Time for a test fit. Awesome. It fits. Now let me show you how I did those tapers. Alright, well this is where the 7 degree taper starts. And by the way, I determined these angles just based on what looked good and what fit the design. I'll be cutting these tapers using primarily the compound slide. It's rotated to 7 degrees, and then once the tool holder is in the preferred position, everything gets locked down. If you hadn't noticed, I'm using all homemade high speed steel cutting tools. As I got closer to the final cut, I started taking lighter passes, just so I would have a nice finished surface. I adjusted the compound slide to 20 degrees, and then cut the small taper. I remounted the ball turner, and then finished up the rest of the machining operations. Oh, I wanted to point out, I do know that I'm going through this kind of quickly, so if anybody has any questions about this, or feels that I've skipped something, please contact me and let me know in the comments. Even though I used slightly different machining techniques on these two pieces, because I followed the dimensional drawings, these two parts match. And if you detect a little tone of surprise in my voice, it's because these were going to be practice pieces and they worked out on the first attempt. These mini sharpies are pocket sized and that's probably why they come with the little keyring attachment. It just snaps off. I have an Amazon affiliate link for these down in the description, along with some other tools and materials. Well, I had a little surprise waiting for me once I cut the pocket clip off. It left a hole, meaning that the cap was no longer airtight. Luckily, I was able to trim off this little bump and it didn't leave another hole. I tried several caps, and they all left a hole once the pocket clip was cut off. A little dab of CA glue and we're good to go. Instead of using a tap to put threads in these holes, I just forced the screw in, that way I'd get a tighter fit. Okay, for those of you wondering if that screw's gonna hit the tip of that marker, here's your answer. Nope. I didn't bother scraping off the embossed logo, because it makes for a really nice tight fit for the cap. Oh, and the reason for the screw? is so that the cap doesn't come out when you pull it off the marker. I didn't show it, but I added CA glue to both screws to keep them airtight. the first time I'd ever made anything like this on the lathe. I really had a lot of fun and it's not going to be my last for sure. In fact, this one's made out of 6061 T6511 aluminum. Uh, I think I want to try something out of brass next, so stay tuned for that. Well, I really enjoyed that project and I really like metalworking, especially on the lathe, so I'm going to be doing some more of that, so stay tuned. And if you'd like to see some of my other videos, you can check those out. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, like, and remember to hit the little bell button also because that will notify you when my new videos come out. 
So as always, take care, be safe, and thanks for watching.